Hey there, fight fans. Welcome to the SB Nation MMA post-fight show for UFC on ESPN Plus 7, brought to you by Bloody Elbow and MMAmania.com, the only two websites on the entire fucking planet you'll ever need to go to get your mixed martial arts news. My name is Flying Brian J, and with me, as usual, are the guys from the six-round post-fight show, Mr. Positivity, Eddie Mercado, and Major Zane Simon. We just watched a really high-level Fight Nights global card that took place in St. Petersburg. <laughs> <laughs> and the most important fight of the night, Roxanne, the happy warrior, Mata Ferry, got a split decision victory over Antonia or Antonina Shevchenko. Zane, how excited are you for Roxanne? Oh, I mean, Target's an instant 10 for me on that alone. I know Eddie's going to have to feel some feelings about this, feel some ways, but, you know, I I can't be happier to then to see her get that win because that was a tough fight. That was a fight set up for her to lose and for the, the UFC to build Shevchenko as one of their new cornerstone, like, top fighters of that division. And for Modafferi to go out there and pull out a really hard-fought win to, to fight, like, a stylistically perfect fight to get that win that was beautiful to see yeah it was a bad night for tiger muay thai unfortunately yeah well they were in a i mean they, it was a hard spot for tiger muay thai like oh for sure they were in some fights you know shevchenko the, that was a hard loss for her but so you can like he was just not set up to win that fight no he wasn't supposed to win but he actually did way better oh, than yeah. anyone thought he was going to do which is actually probably the biggest takeaway yeah. for tiger the whole night but like everybody was in way over their head from tiger yeah but they didn't give a fuck they still took the fights well yeah Hajduken set himself up really well he got the first yeah. takedown in the ufc against makashev um and he put on a really good performance there were a lot of people after that fight who were thinking it was going to be a fight of the night when it was all said and done i don't think that is how it's going to uh, turn out but it was a pretty decent decently fun back and forth grappling battle and in fact this entire card was like some it was a position over submission grappling a lot of the time we either saw early finishes with some some really surprising and really fun to watch knockouts or we saw kind of long slogs that featured just Habib Nurmagomedov style of, of grappling but Zane what is um what does the happy warrior do for bloody elbow and what how do you know her so well uh, she, we just brought her on to start doing like fighter perspective, what we're calling a fighter's perspective series of articles where, you know, she's just writing articles about her life as a UFC fighter, training and preparation, mental thought processes and all the different parts of the game that is fans that we don't get to, you know, we get to talk about a lot, but we don't actually get to hear from in fighters outside of interviews where they're trying to give very like, can this is my you know i had a great camp i've trained hard for this guy we know what to expect all that it's good to actually get somebody especially who's somebody who's a pretty decent writer on her own uh to really detail that kind of stuff and i've been editing a lot of her work and helping her just you know get things set up and get her her work published and all that so to me it's you know it's really great i've been chatting with her and stuff like about about all her her articles and all that, so I'm really happy to see her get this win. She seems like an incredibly nice person, very very intelligent. She, how many languages does she speak? She, I think she put out some Russian tonight. I know she knows some uh, probably Mandarin or something like that. She knows a ton of Japanese. She Japanese. lived in Japan for a while, but I have no idea otherwise. She's yeah, she she's speaks, great. She speaks the fight language. That's right. The language of the fist. Yeah. Damn it. How can you not root for her, though? Like, no, I know. Aside from, like, my bias towards Tiger Muay Thai, you know, like, rooting for Mata Ferry is, like, is, like, automatic. Yeah. It's so, like, and that's aside from her being involved with Bloody Elbow. Just, mm -hmm. you know, because she's, she is definitely rarely, if ever, the best athlete in the room. However, mm -hmm. she is just so damn gritty and, like, and and savvy like she knew like her pressure was going to be the key to winning this fight and like she knew she was going to have to eat some shit and she did it and and she did exactly what she needed to do to take this fight to make this the kind of fight in which she had a, the best chance of winning there so, was a moment that she actually really actually won this fight in the third round where shevchenko got back to her feet and was in the clinch and broke the clinch and was circling away and Mata Ferry grabbed one of her wrists 
and chased her all the way back across the cage with like one wrist control back into the clinch and kept her there the rest of the round and got more takedowns and like that won her the fight in a round where she was getting picked off late by strikes outside like getting being able to hold that clinch control like that and reassert herself her control in there that was the entire difference maker and that's that's some savvy shit because you see fighters all the time who desperately need to hold the clinch and their opponent breaks back to space and they just kind of like give up and reset and try to figure out how to get back there and that's that, uh, you know when you have 30 fights on your opponent like that's yeah. what shit you need to be doing out there you know yep. the good one for him but how about alistair overeem coming up with the fucking we ain't talking about him yeah like, i know and I, i'm happy to see Alist- alistair overeem seems like such a like fun dude honestly yeah, i love alistair man like it's one of those things like i you know i know he got like the whole ubereem shit for years and i get that and i know he's he's, he's had a bunch of times where he seems like he's like really people we're like always like oh he seems really arrogant and stuff like that but over time it just seems like he's just always so mellow and calm and cool and just always having fun you know yeah he just seems like a really good time like i want to yeah. go on vacation with this dude yeah like let's go hang out on a beach somewhere and like bring your crocodile and we'll just like you know i don't know yeah. just be cool They'd probably sit on I'm a yacht with here. like leonardo dicaprio and that type of shit <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sure that's what Alistair Overeem is going to do for his celebration tonight because Dan Hardy asked him in the cage, what's he going to do to celebrate tonight? I assume it's a yacht with Leonardo DiCaprio surrounded by uh, <laughs> just a ton of beautiful people. The main event was... Well, he's Dutch, so it's probably going to be like techno and, you know, like going out and listening to techno and dancing, drinking some Heineken or something. Oh, fuck yeah. Let's do that. Uh, I'm going to need a little bit of a, a help to get me going. Maybe I'll talk to Johnny Bones before we head out on the town. <laughs> there you go. Oh, fuck. John knows how to party. He certainly does. He should probably uh, reel that in. He hasn't been in trouble for a while, and he's going to be the first person to defend the belt twice uh, this year, so that's pretty cool for John Jones. Uh, anyway, yeah, you mentioned about Uberim in the past and his uh, drug use, his PEDs. Anderson Silva said yesterday that he said he doesn't think that his PED failure on the test and and John Jones, it it doesn't affect their legacy. They still should be known as the greatest ever. Eddie, do you think that the the positive test for Uber in the past affected his legacy? I don't give a fuck about these failed drug tests. (laughs) Yeah. I don't give two shits nor a fuck. Here's how much I don't give a fuck. Like, I, I, I can't stand watching baseball. Like, that shit is fucking boring, yeah. dude. Like, I'll go to games, but I'm not about to sit down and watch a fucking whole baseball game. However, I know who Barry Bonds is, and I know he has the record of home runs, and I know he failed drug tests. I don't give a shit. Like, as far as I'm concerned, if I need someone to hit a home run for me, I'm going to go get Barry Bonds. Like, I don't <laughs> give a fuck that he failed a bunch of drug tests. I don't care that John Jones is failing drug tests. If I need someone to fight for me, I'm going to get John Jones. Yeah, Anderson Silva, he's a goat. I don't care that he popped. Vitor Belfort, TRT, I don't give a shit, man. Like, Ooh. that only does so much. That doesn't, you know, like, you can't, you can't, you can give me the same drugs and I will never be able to reproduce the same results. You know what I mean? So, like, supplements and, and all that only does so much. Like, you still have to have, you still have to have it. You know what I mean? To perform on that level and to be as great as they were. Like, I honestly don't give a shit. I just yeah. don't. I, I do think like, I do think TRT tour. He definitely uh, got a lot of help from that. You know, sure he could have done a lot of those things, but as soon as he got off, he was way slower. But yeah, I agree. Let these guys have them like all. A physical let's watch, thing, though. Let's watch fun fights. Also, too, like he didn't fail a drug test in the USADA era. And if you're talking about pre-USADA MMA, are we really going to split hairs on who we think was on drugs and wasn't on drugs? Yeah. Like, right. You know. It, Half of Nick Diaz's camp has failed drug tests. Are we going to, like, you I can't mean, turn around and be like, e- e- your favorite fighters, we're all using, you know? All of them. That's the way I see it. Like, everyone. Yeah. Like, if you're not, then you're probably not fighting on this level. Yep. You know, because the guys competing here are willing to do whatever it takes. Period. Period. Yep. And like, and like Nick Diaz says, all your motherfuckers are on steroids. All your yeah, on steroids. Yeah, including Jake Shields, including Gil Melendez. Yeah. That's like half the scrap pack right there, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. knows. That's Call how he knows everybody's on drugs. Yeah, he's – no, nah, I'm not even – I don't want to get us in legal trouble. 
allegedly <laughs> allegedly let's put that that's all you gotta do say that and we'll be fine <laughs> but <laughs> let's continue talking about Alistair Overeem's win over Alexi Olenek unless you want to leave already Zane we're 10 minutes in no no <laughs> whatever okay. I'm I'm you know I'm impatient but that's just my thing <laughs> Okay, well, so Alexi Olenek comes out, rocks Alistair Overeem with a looping right, uh, comes in, tries to finish the fight against the fence where Overeem does the thing where he just goes in the shell. Um, Olenek tried to lock in like three to four standing Ezekiel chokes. Alistair Overeem landed a bunch of uber knees, and basically both guys got to do their shit for four minutes and 45 seconds until Overeem uh, finished the fight. Uh, did it live up to your expectations, Zane? Did you love that oh, fight? Oh, yeah, way more than. I mean, that, that fight was a shit, shitload of fun. Honestly, like, seeing Alinek go out and really work hard to win quickly and, like, not just win off a takedown and, like, going to get my weird chokes, but really just take the fight to Overeem, that was fun as hell. I expected Alinek to try to just kind of stay safe and try, try to bait Overeem into these single spots where he could do make something weird happen. Seeing him actually just go out there and try to put it on him and really make this fight a mess was a lot more fun. So I had I had a ton of fun with, fun with this whole card, honestly. Like morning MMA, drink coffee, sit down, watch a bunch of action fights. Like I had a good time. I was afraid when Olnick came out and pulled guard. I was like, <laughs> no, like that's not what I want to see. Yeah. He's always going to do that right away, though. And it almost worked. Like, Overeem fucking yeah. went to the ground with him. Yeah. It was It was, It was. was just, I, I didn't want it to go in that direction. But yeah. then he starts swinging, and I'm like, okay, yeah. you get your Dan Kelly on, you know? <laughs> yeah. He's the heavyweight Russian Dan Kelly, isn't he? That's fucking hilarious. Uh, and Zane, you want to do a, a what the fuck or a shining star, and then we can get out of here? Uh, well, shining star is obviously Roxanne Modafferi. I'm not going to, you know, mm-hmm. like... Yeah. We, we're gonna keep pump, we're we're gonna keep riding that train until the wheels fall off. I don't care, Roxy, all day. But uh, otherwise, ah, uh, I don't know. There wasn't really any what the fuck stuff on this card. It was pretty solid. There were you know a couple slow fights here and there, but yeah, my my only what the fuck I think would have to be the fact that Yakolev actually makes lightweight. Yeah, it's... like that's kind of what the fuck ish. Sure. Otherwise, though, like, that's just fun. It's fine. No, no complaints. Real, real, or being, you know, being real here. No complaints about this. No, I can't think of one either. I'm trying really hard, but like you said, morning MMA is the way to do it. I mean, we got an entire Saturday left ahead of us, and we- except for Eddie, Eddie's Eddie's day got all laid up. But yeah. yeah, well, actually, we're we're finishing up way sooner than I thought, so yeah. I'm still kind of I'm stoked. And, yep. like, we got so many finishes right off the bat, so I could, like, I caught up on my laundry, you know, <laughs> I made some food, be to the lumpkin. Like, it is what it is. <laughs> All right. All right. On that note, I think we got to cut this there. Uh, Eddie and I are going to head over, hit the sixth round. I'm going to have to hear a whole bunch more about his, his personal habits. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> You can find me on Twitter at these same time. You can find Eddie on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado. You can find both of us over at bloodyelbow.com. We'll be back for uh, the sixth round. is actually going to drop today. It's later, later this evening. We're going to drop it. So nice. you can listen to that later on. And uh, we'll be back next week for that. UFC. Well, actually, I might be out of town next week. But Eddie will be here for that Jacare Hermanson card. So Hey, I'm actually gone next week, too. All right. So. I guess it's just me, then. Yeah, he's gonna have I'll to. Find, you know. I'll find someone. I'll bring in maybe. Maybe we'll get Roxanne Modafferi to join us. Maybe she'll be up for that. That'd be crazy. Give it a shot. All right. I've never actually spoken to her. She's really nice. First time. Is she, in, is she in our Slack chat? Uh, yeah, but she's never in really in it. Makes sense. All right. Anyway, <laughs> thanks, Brian, and uh, we're gonna get out of here. See you later, Zane. Hey, uh, Mr. Eddie Mercado. You talk yeah. a lot about the um, Tiger Shulman Muay Thai, Tiger Muay Thai. Oh, no, Tiger Muay Thai, not Tiger Shulman. Tiger Sorry. Shulman's in New York. That's Jimmy Rivera squad. Sorry. Okay. Who all on this card was from your team? Okay, so on this team we had uh, Saryukian, who was in the co-main event. He put up a really good fight. Antonina Shevchenko, obviously Valentina's sister. And we had, um, opening up the card, Rafael Fiziev who uh, 
got taken out with that spinning back kick to the face, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, so it was a bad, bad night for old Tiger Muay Thai. Yeah, oh, but, but we did have one good shining moment. Was um, how do you say that guy's name? Evlayev, Evlayev, Evloyev. Oh yeah, Evloyev. Yeah, that guy. Evloyev. He uh, he actually did oh, yeah. pretty good. He went full Khabib on that Choi guy. So he, uh, I think he's he's been spending some time at Tiger, if I'm not mistaken. But um, other than that, yeah, those are. It was a, it was a rough night for Tiger, even though Sir Yukin did do really well. Yeah, that's not ideal. Do you have you met these guys? Have, like, do you know them? Oh yeah. Yeah, so like Raphael, he's he was one of the kickboxing coaches out there, and like I went and sat in on some of the pra the pro practices or like the pro sparring uh, fights. So like I got to watch like him and Peter Yan go at it, and like, oh, I mean, it was just so much fun. It was so much fun. Um, but yeah, on this card, that was all that was on there or out there when I was there. She the Shevchenkos were gone. I uh, got to meet Yana Kuniskaya. That was pretty badass. Like, Norton Talib was out there. Um, what are your thoughts on, I know that in Muay Thai, they yell, hey, every time you throw a fucking strike. What do you, we... think, uh, what do you think about Valentina? Every time, every fucking time, Antonina moves, she's like, hey, 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 fucking, she like blinks hard, and she's like, hey. What do you think eh, about that shit? Hey, you know, to each their own. It's really like a breathing thing. It's like breathing and rhythm and cadence. So whatever you got to do to get the job done. No, but man, no, that third it, round was fun. Valentina yelling it from the sideline. I mean, she's not breathing. She doesn't know. Oh, 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 oh. Well, hey, that's just, that definitely is a Muay Thai thing for sure. 100% Muay Thai thing. Um, I don't know, it's the culture, man. Go to Thailand, check it out. Go watch some fights. I got to spend Christmas Day watching Muay Thai fights. It was pretty awesome. That'd be a fucking hell of a present, man. Super awesome. Well, they're they're calling me in for the sixth round. All right, so I yeah. Have, thanks I for staying a little go. extra and help me fill some void here talking about this fight card. Yeah, sir. I will. Um, well, shit, you won't be here next weekend, but the one after that. Right. Until which, then. which will be uh, fight night? Iaquinta versus Cowboy Cerrone. That should be a fucking blast. Ooh, bananas. All right, Brian. You take care. See you later, buddy. All right, Ooh. fight fans. If uh, this is your first time here, let me tell you how it's going to go down. Myself, Flying Brian J, is going to take you through the rest of this fight card that I didn't talk uh, to Eddie or Zane about with you guys in the comment section or in the live chat being my co-host. So I know Rob's already answered this question, but the rest of you, what post-fight rating would you give this entire night of fights from the very first one, Magomed Mustafaev defeating Rafael Fiziev, Eddie's uh, training partner or coach, via spinning back kick to the face and follow-up punches all the way to the main event of the evening where Alistair the Ream over Ream defeated Alexi Olenek with knees to the face in the clinch and some follow-up ground and pound a hammer fist and then a fucking pretty hard goddamn elbow. I would give the day of fights for me. It's 3 o'clock central time where I reside and I would give the night of fights uh, day of fights like I said. Whatever. Like a 5. You know? Um, if it weren't I didn't, I, there were a lot of times where I was like just bored, wanting to play Fortnite instead of watching the fights, I gotta be honest with you. You know, like when um, Mas, Mavsar Evoleev, another one of the, the Tiger Muay Thai guys from Eddie's team, uh, defeated Xiong Wu Choi via unanimous decision. It was just, oh, thanks, June. It was just a lot of, like I said, position over submission grappling. And the same thing happened in Sultan Aliyev or Sultan Ali versus Kita Nakamura. It was just like that fight was Ali pushing Nakamura up against the fence, searching for a takedowns, couldn't find it most of the time. And I, I just, I'm not that entertained by it. And it was a terrible way to end the prelims, especially after we saw four straight finishes in a row to start the night off. So um, then there was, well, Islam Makashev versus Armin Hajdukin. I, I saw a ton of people saying it was fight of the night. Yes, there were some really fun, really high-level grappling exchanges, but there there just wasn't any ebb. There wasn't much flow, and uh, it overall wasn't that entertaining to me, so I would go with a 5 out of 10. Devrim 
Devrim Bulbul. Bulbulol. He's got Rage and Al. Jackson Round says a 6 out of 10. It's 10 a.m. in Belgium. Ooh, I bet you have a really good selection of beers there. Rob's got 1 p.m. in California. Uh, Rob already had mentioned that he'd give it a 7 out of 10. Anyway, not the best scores in the world, but when it ends the way it did with a back-and-forth battle where Alistair Overeem gets that finish over Olenek, and like I said, they both guys got to do their stuff. If you listen to the co-main event podcast with uh, Chad Dundas and Ben Folks, Chad loves saying both guys got to do their stuff. And that's true. In that fight, Olenek was not going position over submission. He was going submission over fucking everything else. Uh, and he was searching for the Ezekiel on the feet. Like Eddie and Zane said, he pulled guard, which was pretty crazy. Uh, Marcus McGay, he gave it a seven. Mm, yeah, you know. But Olenek... Searching for them submissions on the feet, pulling guard, sacrificing some a position where he could have got ground and pound out by Alistair Overeem because Alistair's got really good ground and pound, those long fucking arms of his like he did to Stefan Struve quite a while back. Um, so pulling guard was risky, and I liked it. I'm like, oh, this is ballsy. This is a ballsy technique, Alexi. Uh, another thing that like takes the rank, rating, the post-fight rating down for me is that it got us nowhere you know the main event usually is a fight that's meaningful for its division if if nothing else and and one fighter will move closer to a title shot Overeem was scheduled to fight Alexander Volkov instead he defeated Alexei Olenek in the post-fight interview Alistair Overeem called out or said that he would like to fight dun 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 Alexander Volkov so like this fucking nothing basically happened there um Jackson Rouse is 3 p.m. in Arizona, and he really liked the commentary crew. R.C. Kim Yakovlev has the weirdest build. He's like 6'4", little person. He has the biggest head I've ever seen. Yeah, and Rob says the rebook, Reem versus Volkov. I think that makes a lot of sense. The commentary team, thank you for bringing that up. Jackson Rounds. I saw a ton of people. I follow a lot of stuff on Twitter, and I like talking about what goes on on Twitter. There's just there's a lot of content that you can take from that social medium. Uh, anyway, a lot of people didn't like the commentary booth. They didn't like the three-man team with Paul Felder inserted in there with Dan Hardy and John Gooden. I think I thought it was great. You know, when when Hardy and Gooden are in there, they have a very kind of rote way that they do things, and it's fine. I think throwing Paul Felder in there uh, changed it up a little bit. He added a little bit of a, a dynamic. You know, an active fighter in there with a retired fighter, and then a, the the UK's version of John Anik. I thought it was fantastic. Marcus McGay says Gooden is criminally underrated. The dude has um, some dry humor, and I'm not I'm not uh, knocking him for saying that. I actually love dry humor. I follow some dry humor things on Facebook and YouTube. Um, but he, he throws out these little like dry humor jokes that I fucking find hilarious. I can't remember one of them off the top of my head, but he hit a really good one on this card tonight. And... I like John Gooden. He does a really good job. Him and Dan Hardy are fine together, but I really liked Paul Felder being inserted into their trifecta. I think Paul's a really intelligent fighter. I think he's really good uh, on the microphone. He's very well-spoken, knowledgeable, um, and he's very honest. There was a time when he was he said that he did not want to fight Islam Makashev because of how good Islam Makashev's grappling is. And... He said that he would like to learn one of the moves that Makashev put on uh, Sar Sarkugian or Sarkugian. I'm going to keep calling him Hydukin. Uh, Armin Hydukin. The move that I'm mentioning here, if we can mention it before we get past, uh, a little redundant there with the two mentions, but they were in a, like a, a clinch position. We kind of leaned over. There was a lot of space between their their bellies, and Makashev was reaching over and grabbing the wrist control on the opposite side of Hajduken and pulling him so it would rotate his body so that he could do the outside trip boot sweep on him way more easy. or It allowed him to get that with uh, more fluidity and have a higher chance of landing it. And Paul Felder was like, I really like that. I'm going to have to pull that off or I'm going to have to learn that. And 
Dan Hardy said, dude, if you pull that off in your next fight, that'd be fucking incredible. And Paul's like, hey, man, let me attempt it before we even try to put it into the octagon in a live situation. But anyway, the humility of Paul Felder, uh, the knowledge that he has, and that type of little conversation that they had, I thoroughly enjoyed that type of thing. And that technique that Paul was talking about in the Makashev Hadouken fight was it was awesome. And there were a couple of times like that. The outside boot sweep, or just a, a trip takedown that Makashev hit on Hadouken was gorgeous to watch. Uh, and there was, uh, God, there was one other thing. Oh, and Armin getting that takedown for the first time against uh, Makashev was pretty cool as well. Jackson Round says, Felder was the right mix of color analyst. He reminded me of Mike Goldberg and Cruz mixed. Ooh. I mean, he's not as rote. He's not as uh, scripted as Mike Goldberg. You know, Goldberg just had the the one-liners. He had, it's all over. And um, virtually identical. That sort of thing. Embracing the grind. You know, those little sound bites that he had that he just said every fight. I don't think Felder has some of those. But, um, yeah, Felder's, Felder's fucking really good. In the Mataferi fight versus Shevchenko, something that I wanted to mention is there was a time when uh, Mataferi was had Shevchenko mounted and it looked like she was going to posture up and rain down some ground and pound, and she got swept. And then Shevchenko landed on top, and then Mataferi fucking swept her. She went for like she was pulling an arm across, going for an arm bar, and the next thing you know, she's right back on top of Shevchenko. We mentioned it with Eddie and Zane, the grit, determination that Mataferi showed in this fight, basically a microcosm of her entire career. I mean, she is a veteran, been in the game a really long time. She got cut from the UFC, now she's back, and to get a victory over a, a pretty big name, even though she's only like 1-0 in the UFC in Antonia, Antonina Shevchenko, um, I think that's a big deal for Roxanne Mataferi. In the post-fight interview, Dan Hardy said, what do you want next? And she said, give me Chris Cyborg. She's like, I'm kidding, of course, but... And, and that, that small humor that she has is is delightful as well. Plus, uh, Serena Southpaw on Twitter, she fo I, we follow each other. She loves craft beer, and I like talking to her about craft beer. So the Mataferi story is something that's pretty fucking awesome. Let's go down and talk about Shamil Abdurakimov versus Marcin Tybura. Tybura kept trying to throw the... He throws those long, like, snap kicks to the belly, but they're not that snappy. They, they're not that quick. And... He wasn't doing that well with them. There were a lot of times where Tybura would throw a straight and Abdurakimov would throw an overhand, and you would think the straight would be the, the faster one, but it wasn't it wasn't as fast. And it's weird because he seems like the the lighter, maybe faster heavyweight, but the strike came at a slower speed than Abdurakimov's, and Abdurakimov's had a lot more power. The finish came in the second round um, when Abdurakimov kind of shifted his shoulders down, dropped the dropped his left shoulder and came with the left hook. Boom! That fucking made Tybura out on his feet, and then he finished it um, via TKO right there in that second round. It's gorgeous from Abdurakimov. Post fight interview, uh, Dan Hardy said, "Were you planning that that left hook?" And he's like, "Nah, I don't plan stuff. I, you know, I I thought he, that shot might hit him. I threw it, eh, and it turned out that it finished him. So cool beans." Okay, Abdurakimov, and a lot a lot of things could get missed in translation. Not just the Abdurakimov, but like a lot of times. Who knows? Rob says uh, Tybura is a fighter close to the cut line. Douglas Lima versus Michael Venom Page. Well, I, I mean, I picked Lima for sure. But I like watching both guys. I like the, the funky, weird style that Venom Page brings to the table. Douglas Lima, powerful, a lot of finishes. I don't, I gotta be honest, I don't follow Bellator that much because I'm not required to. But, um, Marcelo Gom, JV, and Rob Amos says he should be cut. He should absolutely be cut. There's no argument there. Guy's gone. See you, buddy. Uh, but Tybura, I don't think they're going to cut him. He lost to Verdum and Lewis. 
beat Stefan Struve last there after he off. He at least gets one more. But yeah, Marcelo Golm, third fight from the top, got knocked out by Sergei Pavlovich in the very first round. It was an overhand right to left hook combination that started the end of it, put Marcelo Golm up against the fence, and an uppercut. I, th I can't remember if it was Felder. I don't remember which one of the uh, broadcast booth guys said it, but a murder uppercut finished the fight. It was a really good finish for Pavlovich. But, again, you know, like the flow of the fight card, there wasn't any ever flow in that fight. Pavlovich came out, fucking ran, Golem over. And most of the finishes that we had were that way. It wasn't like a fighter was gritting it out, gritting it out, all of a sudden like a finish happened. Nope. Fucking just steamrolled him. RC Kim Olenek went for it. You have to give him props. I'd give the Knight a 6, a 7.5 for the action, and a 4.5 uh, for the talent. Marcus McGahey, Tybura versus Arlovsky. Haven't they already fought? I feel like they fought before. Yes, they, they fought June 17th of 2017, and Tybura won via decision. So I don't think that's what happens. JV, what's next for Reem? Run it back against Curtis Blades. I thought about that, and I was thinking about both Olenek or Bl um, Overeem could run it back with Curtis Blades, but I don't think that's what's actually going to go down. Uh, I want Curtis Blades to fight Derek Lewis when Derek Lewis comes back, or maybe Der uh, Curtis Blades against Stipe Miocic. Miocic. But I think Reem versus Volkov, like Rob says, is what's going to happen. It was the fight that was supposed to headline this card. And uh, Reem in the post interview said that's what he'd like to have happen. And yeah, let's just do that. Rebook Alexander Volkov versus Alistair Overeem, and we'll go with that. Also, Olenek said that uh, he'd like to get back in there as soon as possible. He got knocked out, so he's probably facing at least a, a four-month submission, uh, submission, suspension. So who knows? I want him to fight someone that like really sucks at grappling so we can see another Ezekiel choke. Here's how the heavyweight rankings look right now. We've got Daniel Cormier as the champion, Stipe Miocic as number two, Francis Ngannou, then Junior Dos Santos, Curtis Blades, Derek Lewis, Alexander Volkov, Alistair Overeem, Cain Velasquez, Alexi Olenek, Marcin Tibera. Uh Maybe you do the two losers, Marcin Tibera versus Alexi Olenek. Perhaps Alexi Olenek versus uh, Justin Willis. That'd be something. Um, also, you could do Shamil Abdurakimov versus Alexi Olenek. Blagoy Ivanov got that decision over Ben Rothwell controversially recently. Maybe maybe he could fight um, Olenek or something like that. Yeah, Rob says Olenek versus Willis. Okay. We are pretty deep into the show. I, I, I'd like to make the shows longer, but um, maybe we'll do that in the near future. I didn't pay that close of attention to this card, so we're just going to move on, I guess. Oh, Rob, Ivanov's, Ivanov is booked against Tai Tuivasa. Dope. That's going to be a fun fight. Um, Devrim says the winner of Nganu versus Junior Dos Santos should get Daniel Cormier. I think, yeah, absolutely. But we don't know what the fuck's happening at the top of the heavyweight division. Is Cormier fighting Lesnar? I don't know. Is Cormier going to fight Miocic? I don't fucking know that either. But, sure, that sounds good. JV, do you think there are any exciting heavyweights coming through or just the same old? Uh, man, I, I don't think that Curtis Blades is that exciting, but Curtis Blades is a very high-level competitor who's very, very, very fucking good at what he does. Any young up and well, Tai Tuivasa is a young heavyweight. You know he had that setback against uh, Junior Dos Santos, right? And he'll be back. Yeah, I think I think Tai Tuivasa is going to be an exciting heavyweight in the near future. JV, what do you think? Let me ask you guys this: What would you do for post-fight bonuses? Remember, on this show we give out five performance bonuses or whatever, two hundred fifty thousand dollars in total, because we're not actually giving anybody any money at all. So you can go five performance bonuses, two, uh, three performance bonuses, and a fight of the night. Whatever you want to do, tell me what you would do. And I'm going to find the real ones while I kind of mention what I would give. I would give the main event an extra $50,000 because it had the most ebb, the most flow. It was the most entertaining fight in my opinion. Uh, and then I would give performance bonuses to uh, 
I'd give one to Magomed Mustafaev for that spinning back kick to the face of Rafael Fiziev, especially because after he knocked him down, he saved him from a little extra ground and pound. And I thought that was a respectful thing to do. I love it when fighters hold off from the extra strike. It was a fucking incredible spinning back kick to the face. We haven't seen that shit since Henan Barrow did it to uh, Eddie Wineland a long fucking time ago. That was awesome. So that gets a performance bonus. Uh, Michal Oleg Shejuk uh, for his knockout over Gadzamurad Antagulov, a fight we haven't talked about yet. But uh, Gadzamurad Antagulov ran at Oleg Shejuk with his fucking face just right out there, hands down, searching for the, the uh, takedown attempt. And Oleg Shejuk, just like left hook, left uppercut, sent into the canvas three times before finishing the fight with a little bit of ground and pound. And yeah, it was that sniper fucking left hand. I loved the uppercuts as Antogulov came rushing forward with his head down. Uppercut, bam. That was awesome. So for me, Michal Oleg Sejuk gets a performance bonus. Um, and uh, man, who do I give it to? The, here's my option. Sergei Pavlovich over Marcelo Golm was pretty dope. Uh, Sh- Shamil Abdurakimov over Marcin Tybura. You know, that was a ranked fight getting to finish instead of, like, the, the Pavlovich one, you know, low level in the UFC. And we've got the, um, like, Anaconda or Modified Guillotine Choke thing that Alexander Yakovlev got on Alex Da Silva. Ooh, it's tough. I'm going to go with Alexander Yakovlev because we used to say... There used to be, you know, a submission of the night and knockout of the night and then fight of the night. So I'm going to give it to Yakov Lev for his uh, modified guillotine choke. I've never seen a submission like that, a choke like that. Um, That's what I'd go for. Uh, Thank you for being here, paid programming. Rob Amos says Pavlovich got knockout of the night, in his opinion. Mataferi versus Shevchenko, fight of the night. That's pretty dope. I think I like those. Uh... Why can't I can see RC Kim? Well, anyway, I can see RC Kim on my screen, but not like in the live chat. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, anyway, Jackson Round says performance bonuses to Mataferi, Alistair Overeem, Mustafaev, uh, Mi- Michal Oleg Sejuk, and Shamil Abdur Akimov. So five performance bonuses. Solid, solid. Travis Kelleher. Whoa, bro. Language. I have my kids around. Put, put your headphones in. Put, put your headphones in. R.C. Kim. It's amazing how Roxy was kind of washed when she was on Tough years ago and she has reinvented herself since. I, I don't remember her on The Ultimate Fighter. That. I didn't. I don't watch the Ultimate Fighter. I haven't. I've watched season one through three, and then the one where Sonnen versus Johnny Bones. But she is a surprisingly really freaking good. There, I said freaking Travis. She she is a really darn good grappler. She's she's very. Um, she has like that stick to itness, stick to itness, gumption, perseverance, try hard. And uh, stays with it. She's very durable. She's only been knocked out twice, and both of them were slams. So, yeah, she has. Uh, she's pretty. Th- she's pretty darn talented. Devrim says Brock doesn't deserve anything. Stipe, if he want to get a shot at the title, should get the loser of Ngannou versus Junior, and then if Stipe wins, should get the winner of DC versus one of those two. Let's look at the real bonuses here. Fight of the night went to Makashev versus Hajdukin, and performance bonuses went to Pavlovich and Mustafaev. Mustafaev. Yeah, man, Mustafaev. I love saying Magomed Mustafaev or Magomed Mustafaev. However you say it, I think it's a really fun name. And that was an amazing spinning back kick to the face. I think that's a darn good place to finish this show out. I'll be back next week uh, with a top three fights to watch for UFC on ESPN plus eight. It is Jack Gray versus Jack Hermanson in the main event, co-main event we've got. Um, 
I'm not going to mention what the real co-main event is, the one that's scheduled, but my co-main event is Alex Cowboy Oliveira versus Platinum Mike Perry, my goodness. Glover the Rainbow, Teixeira versus Ian Kutelaba. Wow. John Hands of Stone Lineker versus Corey Sandhagen. That card is lit AF, my friends. Wow. I'm going to miss it because it's my 30th birthday next weekend, and I'm going to go celebrate that instead. Uh, I asked for the weekend off because I'm turning 30. You only turn 30 once, so I'm doing that. Paid programming loves a couple of those fights. Jackson rounds. Who jumps up their division most with their win tonight? I don't think anybody. Like I mentioned, I don't think that we progressed any divisions this evening. Maybe Shamil Abdurakimov? We didn't mention Kristoff Jotko got a decision over Alan Omadovsky. He basically... He he habibed him. At the end of the second round, he had him crucifix mounted and was raining down some ground and pound. Um, and Herb Dean didn't stop the fight, but but uh, it wasn't that entertaining. Jotko got a much needed win. He was on a three fight losing streak, and it was the last fight of his UFC contract. And he asked the UFC to give him another contract because this is his house. I'm not sure he gets a contract renewal. We might see him in Bellator. Because he did not, he got the victory tonight, 30-25, 30-26, 30-26 over Alan Omadovsky, a, a debutante. I wasn't that impressed. And is he ever going to be a title contender? Probably not. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here for this week, guys. I'll see you next week for my top three fights to watch for that incredible fight card that I just described. There won't be a post-fight show for me, but hopefully Eddie will be here with somebody, maybe Roxanne Mataferi. And uh, I hope that you have a, a great rest of your Saturday. Thanks a lot, guys. Namaste. Oh, please give the video a thumbs up. If you're here now, please thumb the video up. We need a ton of thumbs up because there's always a lot of people that come, don't like me or whatever. Give it a lot of thumbs down. So if you appreciate the content, please thumb it up. Later, my friends.